Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today. Along with our Sunday worship, Founders MCC offers a rich assortment of personal and spiritual enrichment classes, a variety of activities, and a number of support groups to help us grow along the way. Don't forget to visit the information and welcome table in the courtyard today or pick up one of the Connections flyers to find out more. Please don't miss out on the information and announcements in your bulletin, which will make your connection with Founders more meaningful. Check out our website, MCCLA. And find us also on Facebook. And join us in making Founders MCC your one-stop spiritual portal. This is your first Sunday at Founders. You are our guest. We would like to extend an especially warm welcome. After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center. And meet some new friends. We'd love to answer your question, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. Or a cup of tea. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out our welcome tablet. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you're joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website. And let us know that you're joining us. Founders MCC is a place of diapers. And well, we play a place of healing and acceptance. A place of deep spirituality and transformation. A place of joy and love. Welcome to Founders Metro Community Church, Los Angeles. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. Please join with me in the call to worship, which is a leader and people response. When we seek justice for the other, when we love kindness more than ever, we live as God asks us to live. When we walk humbly through life, when we offer mercy to those who hurt us, we are the blessing God hopes we will be. When we are willing to look foolish by following Jesus, when we choose weakness rather than power, we reflect the one who is in our midst. So let's sing to that one this morning as we rise in body and spirit for our opening hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Gracious and loving one, as we gather in this place this morning, we ask that we may be a people of praise, that we may be a people of celebration and a people who have come to know the deepness of the relationship that you have called us into this morning. So be with us, strengthen us, be alive within us, so that through this worship experience and through this community, we may therefore go back out into the world, not only revived and strengthened, but to be like you and to embrace your love in this world. Be with us, therefore, as we worship this day and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Well, it is a joy to welcome you to worship on this uh, Holy of Holy Days. It's Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, we are just delighted that you have chosen to be in worship with us today. Uh, we have three Super Bowl parties this day. Uh, one is with the women's group. Uh, they are inviting you to a Super Bowl party this afternoon. Uh, the other is with the young professionals. Uh, they are also inviting you to a Super Bowl party this afternoon. And there's a third Super Bowl party uh, for gay men who are just watching the adverts. <laughs> Uh, or, or the commercials, I should say. So um, uh, those are three opportunities for you. If you'd like more information about either of those, uh, please see any one of us following worship and we'll be delighted to give you more information. But we're glad that you are here this morning. I know which one I'm going to, uh, but uh, we are so glad that you are here. I want to welcome you, especially if you are worshiping with us for the very first time this morning. We know that you have a choice in worshiping communities, but we are so glad that you are with us this morning. Uh, I wonder if you'd indulge my spirit if indeed you're with us for the very first time today. I wonder if you'd just raise your hand and keep it up for a moment, but I think we've all been here at least once before. Uh, so let's welcome one another with a, a round of, uh, of giving thanks. We also do want to welcome all those who are worshipping with us online this morning. We are just delighted that you are with us today. Uh, please know that you are welcome, and if there is anything that we can do for you here at Founders Metropolitan Community Church, uh, we sincerely want to be in that holy relationship with you. So welcome to you. In our sanctuary this morning, we'll be signing in. Our welcome pads are being distributed right now as I speak. And at the same time, for those of you online, we want to welcome you and to invite you to sign in as well. On that home page where you should be right now, uh, you will see a little box that says, please check in for us. Uh, we invite you to do so, and please let us know that you are worshipping with us. Uh, we certainly want to know that you are here, and we certainly want you to know that you are a part of what we are doing here at Founders Metropolitan Community Church. So welcome to you, each and every one of us, this morning. As you came in, the ushers would have given you your orders of worship, and on the front you'll find the order of today's service, and inside you'll find lots and lots of information about our announcements and ways in which we can make our visit today more meaningful. So please do take a moment to uh, take a look at your orders of worship. Uh, please take them home with you, and then mark on your calendar the events and ministries that you would like to be a part of. If you've got a smartphone this morning, please do check in on Facebook. Uh, let your friends and relatives know that you are here this morning. And then when you've done that, turn it off or move it to silent uh, so that we can have uh, a, a time together uh, of un un uninterrupted worship. We certainly want to be able to devote this next hour just to our personal relationship with the one who loves us most, the one that we call God, expressed to us through the life of Jesus the Christ. So welcome to you. Please do make sure that you uh, take aware of all of the announcements. Uh, this month uh, we are collecting um, uh, toiletries for the orphanage and hospice in Tijuana in Mexico, the one that we have a good relationship with. So please, over the next few weeks, if you would like to bring in uh, toiletries, uh, soaps and uh, toothpaste and things that we can uh, distribute down to that hospice, uh, please do so. There's a box right in the front foyer, uh, and I see already people have started bringing those in. So please continue to do that throughout the month of February, and we'll make sure that they get to the, the correct place um, at the end of this month. We truly believe that we are now centered in the spirit of a loving and gracious God who welcomes us. And so as we are welcomed this morning, so we welcome one another. Can I invite you now to turn to one another, offer a sign of peace, a sign of welcome, as we affirm that God is with us. God bless you this morning.
message. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. This is what he said. You are blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is the most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud, owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. The food and drink is the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's realm. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer even. For though you don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds and know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks 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 be to God. God. Amen. ask you to be seated and to invite the staff and the choir to move into the sanctuary this morning. And before I get into the Word, um, I'm always astonished and proud of the things that we as a congregation get to do to one another with one another. And this uh, week, uh, after a series of uh, sessions together, Uh, A number of our folks from the Young Professionals Group were inducted into a mentoring program uh, specifically for LGBT youth in the foster and adoption services. And uh, we have a a number of those folks who have been on that journey with us this morning, and we're going to invite them to come forward just briefly because I want to not only to give thanks for them, but also to acknowledge them as a part of our congregation. Please give them a round of applause as they come. In breaking news this week from the Williams Institute, uh, they have uh, mentored a report about uh, mentoring for LGBT youth. And they say that according to a new Williams Institute study, over three million LGBTQ youth in the United States could benefit from access to youth mentoring programs. Uh, This new report makes recommendations that youth mentoring programs at local, state, and federal governments can follow to ensure that access to those folks that receive good mentoring from role models. And I don't know about you, but I think we have some great role models uh, in front of us this morning. And my hope and my prayer is that by our mentoring uh, our youth, 
not only will we be good role models, but we also might save them from some of the tragedies that many of us have seen and continue to see in our lives. And so this morning we give honor and we give thanks for their work and for your program and for all that you do. And we want to say as a church, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's lay a blessing upon them as they go into this new work together. Beloved and holy and thankful God, we thank you for these examples that come before us this morning. We thank you for the training that they have received, and we thank you for their lives that continue to be a beacon of light. May they continue in that blessing this morning, so that as they go to work with our youth, that our youth might not only see hope but they might also know that they have a future. It truly does get better, but we can make it better today by living our example. So bless them. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's say thank you one more time to them. So now we ask God to bless this word that we are about to share this morning. We ask that God would still our hearts, open our minds, and receive the fullness of who we are, so that in that fullness we may see the true reality of God in our lives and God in this world. Now, loving and gracious one, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts May they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. Amen. So we've been having this unofficial sermon series over the last few weeks where we have opened this new year by following the life of Jesus from his birth, which we celebrated at Christmas in the season of Advent, all the way through to Jesus' first acts of ministry. And we followed through his baptism, we followed through his early years as uh, Jesus was with his mom and dad, and and they were traveling from place to place. Uh, We remember the story of Jesus as he grew up and as he celebrated his life. Uh, And now today we come to this passage in Matthew, uh, which in many ways is Jesus' own thesis. It's really his mission statement. It's really beginning of his ministry where he declares to the world just what he's about. Now, now remember, and if you were following the scripture reading this morning that Leah read so beautifully for us, uh, Jesus had already been attracting large crowds. Uh, He was already attracting people into his life and attracting people by the message that he was giving. Uh, He was attracting people because he was healing them. He was attracting people because he was restoring people's lives and enabling them to find new hope in him. He'd been doing all sorts of things to gain some popularity, uh, and we know that that popularity was causing some disturbance, especially amongst those who were uh, in the upper echelons, those who had power. And Jesus was attracting all of this attention, and now he's got them. He now tells them what this is all about. So he's, he's already done some of the preamble work. Those of us who are into strategic planning will know that we have already got people onto the boat or into the bus together. Uh, and now Jesus is getting ready to tell them, well, this is really what it's all about. And, and so he stands, it's called the Sermon on the Mount, and he stands there before this throng of people and he delivers this incredible message about who are blessed. Blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are persecuted for my name, for they shall see the new realm of heaven. Blessed are they. You can imagine what, uh, what they might have been feeling that day uh, when they thought that Jesus was coming in to get rid of the Romans and to reestablish uh, the Jewish law and to reestablish the Jewish nation. And here is Jesus saying, no, that's not what it's all about. It's not about power and control. It's not about getting rid of one group of people in order that another group of people might come in and have power. It's not about this message that perhaps you have heard throughout the generations. This is a new and radical message. It's a message, a message that reminds us that we are all in this together. And that being all in this together, our lives are the ones that need to be transformed. Our lives are the ones that need to be humbled. Our lives are the ones that need to come down in order that we might have unity and maybe establishing this new realm of God. I'm sure that that did not go down well. 
It, it didn't go down well with two groups of people specifically. It, it didn't go down well with a group of people who thought that they had power. It, it didn't go down well with this group of folks who believed that somehow uh, Jesus' life was going to overthrow the authorities. And it certainly didn't go down well with the religious authorities of his day, who somehow believed that in order to have this power with the Romans, that they had to buy into their system and to hold them accountable. Jesus got himself into a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble by overthrowing, by, by surmising, by creating this new system that was not about power, was not about control, was not about me being better than you or you being better than me, but reminding humanity that we are called to be in the likeness and to bring about God's realm here on earth. Blessed are you when you do all this for me. I don't know about you, but it feels like the church has also got itself into this place of status quo today that many of us are just very comfortable living the life that we have been called to or living the life in this world just as we are. But if we are truly to be followers of Jesus, we too are called to get ourselves into a lot of trouble and to stir the pot and to ensure that status quo is not what is established on this earth, but rather that we are called just as Jesus was called to turn the world upside down to move the status quo from the haves to the have-nots to a place where all the world is found to be equal one with the other and to use our lives to get ourselves into deep trouble. You, you know, there's a, a, a survey. I love the Williams Institute. They give all sorts of surveys. But there was a, a survey recently about clergy and about, about how we preach in churches. Uh, and, and, and one of the, the survey recommended was that if you are not um, an annoying at least 70% of your congregation at any one particular time, you're not doing your job. <laughs> and and I, I looked at that survey and I was trying to figure out what on earth are they trying to get at? And they were saying, you know, clergy have got themselves into just preaching what people want to hear that they've got themselves into establishing status quo. And there are many, many reasons why we do that. One is because, of course, we want to have people in church on Sunday morning. Um, you know, lots and lots of reasons why we do that. But it says that, that clergy specifically should be the troublemakers of the congregation. They should be the ones that, that stir the pot, that remind people that our lives are not called just to be mellow and just to fill a pew on a Sunday morning, but we are being called to, to turn the political systems of our world upside down, to call out the names of the poor and the disenfranchised, to call out the names of those who are excluded from the world and from our communities and from our societies, and that clergy should be, it didn't say upsetting, it used another word, but I'm not going to use that in polite company this morning, uh, but we should be upsetting the congregation so that they are stirred up to be reminded that their lives are not just about establishing status quo for themselves or status quo for themselves. That we as the people of God should look at the systems of our world just as Jesus did and to find ways in which we can disrupt them and cause them to be different, to find places of equality, to find places where the world can recognize the presence of Jesus. And if we are just colluding with the system, if we are just saying, well, there's nothing we can do, then we are not following in the footsteps of Jesus. We must be those who are getting ourselves into a lot of trouble and disrupting the system. Now, Founders Metropolitan Community Church has a long history of doing that. Uh, we can see the ways in which we have disrupted the system. Oh, I don't believe that we would have marriage equality in our, in our state and in 20 states around this, uh, this wonderful country of ours if we had not been those who are not afraid about getting ourselves into trouble. Uh, we get ourselves into trouble just by opening our doors sometimes on a Sunday morning because there are lots and lots of folks who say that we don't have a right to open our doors on a Sunday and certainly not to this group of people. We're used to getting ourselves into trouble, but there is a temptation for us 
Especially in this new world, there's a temptation for us just to know that because we're accepted in lots and lots of mainline denominations now, and that just as we're welcomed and we're affirmed as peoples, that it might be easy for us just to sit back on our laurels and say, well, we've done what we need to do. But that's not what Jesus has called us to. I believe that Jesus has called this holy remnant of people together to redeem the Christian church and to bring it back to its central message of Jesus the Christ. Who knows that God has called us for such a time as this? To really disrupt the church, to disrupt the the status quo, to disrupt the world so that not just that we are welcome, but that all peoples might be welcomed into the household of God. That every single person should find their self-worth and their self-value Just as Jesus was saying, you are loved and love one another as I have loved you, so God calls us this morning to seek beyond our borders and boundaries, to find the other in our world, and to welcome them in as well, to find places of connection and to find places of hope. And when there is a place where one is not welcomed, to break down that door and to welcome the stranger in. How many ways can we get ourselves into trouble, Founders Metropolitan Community Church? And are you willing to run the risk of getting into trouble yourself? Are you willing to truly embody Christ in your life and in your world so that this world may truly be a place where Jesus would want to walk one more time? Because I believe that if Jesus was to come back today, he would be quite disappointed in the ways of the church, quite disappointed with the ways of many of those who call themselves followers of Jesus, and quite disappointed that somehow we have allowed a system to continue to evolve where some are in and some are out, where some get health care and some don't, where some get food stamps and some don't, where some are felt worthy and others are tossed to one side. We are called as followers of Jesus to get ourselves into trouble and not to be afraid of getting ourselves into trouble, to not be afraid of of upsetting Sacramento or L.A. City Council, to not be afraid of getting ourselves and our hands dirty in the ministry of Jesus. I know that if someone had not got their hands dirty in the ministry of Jesus, I would not be here this morning. I would not be able to stand before you and to say, I am loved by God. We are called to get into trouble. And I can't wait to find out what kind of trouble we're getting ourselves into as Founders Metropolitan Community Church getting ourselves into trouble, each and every one of us, not establishing, not enabling this status quo just to continue to exist. Because you and I know that getting ourselves into trouble, blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake, for you shall be blessed. I know that this is a struggle worth having because in the struggle, Just as Jesus said from the Sermon of the Mount, in the struggle of finding Jesus in our lives, so we establish a deeper relationship with the one who loves us most. Some friends of mine recently said to me, I know that you're a Christian and I know that you are a practicing homosexual. I tell people I'm not practicing anymore. I'm actually pretty good at it. But... um, (laughs) Uh, I'm a professional, a professional homosexual. I like that even more. I'm going to start using that one. Not practicing, but professional. And I said to my friends, I said, you know, one of the realities for me is that in my struggle to be able to put those pieces of my life together, in that struggle, I have had to wrestle with what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And and so many others don't have to go through that struggle, don't have to go through that deep wrestling with the Spirit. But I am so grateful to God that I have had to wrestle 
with these pieces of my life because I am so much more confident about God's love for me than I ever would have been if I had not had to struggle. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God that God has given us this ability to delve deeper into our relationship with God, and I believe that is the gift of the blessedness that we enter into this morning. So may we never be afraid, just like Jesus, when he stood on the Sermon of the Mount and the folks who were underneath him, I'm sure, were going, huh? Huh? What, what, what do you mean? What do you mean, Jesus? I pray that we might never be afraid this morning to hear the words of Jesus in this church, in this community, to get ourselves into all kinds of trouble for the sake of this new realm of God. And for each and every one of us on our own personal journeys and on a journey as community, may we never be complacent with where we are today, but know that there is yet so much more to be done, for the new realm of heaven is amongst us. May God be praised. Let us pray. Loving and gracious one, thank you that you example for us in Jesus the kind of world that you want, a kind of world that is turned upside down 2,000 years ago, and the same kind of world that is turned upside down today. So be with us, O oh God, as we are not afraid to get our hands dirty, as we are not afraid to live out loud our lives in you. And may we never be afraid to get into all kinds of trouble just as Jesus did when he walked this earth. We thank you for that troublemaker in Jesus. And through his troublemaking, we have come to find a home with you. Blessed us, therefore, God, as we now receive this word and ask ourselves those deep questions of how we might be troublemakers for the new realm of God to come. Now add and take from this word, O oh God, that which is needed so that it might only edify us all and bring us ultimately into the closeness of relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
this morning, I'm going to ask that you join me as we go on a little bit of a meditation. And we're going to go traveling back in time. And it's going to require a little bit of your imagination and also that you close your eyes. So I'm going to ask you that you all close your eyes right now. And I'm going to take you back to 1967. And we're going to come on a Sunday morning. You're going to wake up. And I'm going to ask you where you're going to go, because at this point, Founders MCC has not been founded yet. And I want you to think about your life and that you wouldn't be able to come here and to see all the friendly faces and the love that you get to experience in this church. You wouldn't get to hear the sermon by Reverend Neal that inspires us so much that we get to take out into the world and live on a daily basis. There would be no Bible study. There would, need, would not be any choir to come to rehearsal on Wednesday for. And there wouldn't be a zanya by a Nihon or anything else that you may attend during the week. Now we're going to go throughout the city. And we're going to see the different people that this church serves and affects. And on Saturday morning, I don't know if you've ever seen the line to go to the food pantry, but there's a joyous group of people who look like they know each other and are friends. That wouldn't be here. There also wouldn't be the many 12-step meetings that people get to come to in this church that helps them understand a power greater than ourselves and improves their lives. And perhaps the most that I'm affected by, and you may be too, is there are several different children in this city that would go back to school without a backpack. That backpack helps them feel worthy, gives them enthusiasm to go to school and to learn, and all of this is done through Founders MCC. So now I'm gonna ask that you open your eyes and you come back to the present moment because all of these gifts are here. They're here for all of us and they're here for the city. So please give of your ties and your talents so these ministries can continue. Thank you. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for the gifts of this church. The gifts of worship, the gifts of ministry, and the gifts of your patience, your love, and all that you bring to us. I ask that you bless these tithings, and may they be used in ways that are acceptable to you and far beyond our imaginations. Thank you so much. I ask for all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I love the image of being a holy disruptor, a holy <laughs> agitator, a holy troublemaker. As we go to this time in prayer, allow those words to speak to us how we can be a disruptor for God, but not a disruptor in our name, but a holy disruptor in God's name. Please pray with me. 
God, on who we rely, we pray for humility, perseverance. You know that we are ever tempted to reject the better for the perfect. Help us embrace the possibilities unfolding in peace negotiations between the United States and and an understanding between the United States and Syria with the disputes that continue in the Ukraine, wherever progress, even modest progress is being made, we thank you for those. Mm -hmm. Free of implementation responsibilities, we grow and seek for better ideas, or sometimes so we think. Give us humble hearts, we pray. And we pray for that perseverance, that that capacity to keep returning to whatever ways we can to the stubborn problems like global climate. As we learn large numbers that around the world that are affecting wildlife, Mm -hmm. that are affecting human life, Mm -hmm. both from heat related earth causes that are reflected in global climate changes, but also with the human hand as well. Mm for major transitions in the governance and transitions in Egypt, for the quenching of the blood thirst for revenge and the executions and threats in the United States, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, and many more. Energize us for the long haul. Bless us with humble spirits, God, even as we pray as Jesus taught us. If we want to truly live in God's presence, we must live as God's faithful people. In a brief moment of silence, I ask that we all let ourselves begin by recognizing the mistakes we've made, the wrongs we've done, the shortcomings in our journey, the people we have hurt. Mm. So friends, let's go to God and allow that healing presence to be with us in these areas and more.
Thank you, God, for the opportunity to hear our prayers. And let us all join together in our community prayer of confession. You, you are wise enough to forgive our foolishness. You are strong enough to overcome our weakness. You are loving enough to heal the hurt we have caused to you and to others. And so to give us a new hope and a new life in Jesus Christ today and every day. Friends, what has God done to us? Shown mercy. What has God done for us? Forgiven us. This is the good news. We will not boast, for it is not our doing. We will give thanks instead to our God for such grace and hope. Amen. Amen. The God of foolishness is with you. <laughs> and also with you. People of God, open your hearts. We, we offer them to God who transforms us. Join us in singing praises to our God. With joy and wonder, we lift our voices. You were foolish enough to overcome chaos, wise God. Speaking to hills blanketed with snow, pleading your hopes before the mountains, spinning planets into the night sky, mm -hmm. creating all, creating all that is wonderful, mm -hmm. including us, yeah. the people of God in your image. Therefore, with those who wonder what there is to offer, with all those who seek to worship you, we join you in singing praises to you. message and prayer today that God indeed is a God of the whole universe, Amen. of all of the world, and of all of the people. And I believe that it is, was done with a purpose that the symbols Jesus used at that Last Supper were ones that pretty much are universal. For God took bread from the table, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he shared it with those who were there. Just like people can around the world have some form of bread mm -hmm. or rice, something that is a, something that sustains them. Mm -hmm. It is the basis of their meals. Mm -hmm. So is Jesus the basis for our lives. My body broken and given to you, my friends, he said. And that I ask that you eat of this and eat of it often. Eat of his word. And when you do so, remember him. Amen. And then he took a cup from the table and he blessed it. And he shared it with those who were there. Fruit of the vine. And that day it was wine. Today it is grape juice. But something to sustain the body something to quench the thirst. They say you can go without food for some time, but you cannot go without drink. Mm -hmm. He said, this is my blood, my life essence, all of who I am. We can't go for long, friends. We cannot go for long without the essence of Jesus mm -hmm. running through our bodies. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Here your children are gathered where the gifts of the table are offered for all. 
Here you bring us together from every place on earth where the Spirit transform simple gifts into sacred to us. Here where the bread is broken, we are strengthened to go and bring the good news to all. Here where love is poured out and called into your fellowship with all that those are despised within the world, with those who live in your shadows, with those who long for someone to listen to their pain. And when we have brought all time to an end, when we gather your children home, seating around us the great feast of the Lamb, we will sing the new one, the new song, the new song to praise you, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. And my friends here at MCC, we offer a communion that is not shared in all churches, and that is that we offer an open communion. You need not be a member of this church or of any church to come forward and partake of this meal. Some of us have been here for a long time, and we forget. We forget the power of that invitation. And so it is that you are all welcome here. And that's a message for all of us to share to the world. We are all welcome at God's table. Come on up in a few moments as the ushers guide you. As you know, it's our tradition to take the elements, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice, place it upon your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive yourself, and then we offer a prayer of blessing. Of course, as always, we will have a station of consecrated elements to your right to which you might go at any time to partake. If you just want today, just to be with you and God, some private time. If you want to stay where you're at, stay where you're at, but allow yourself, give yourself the gift of communing with the one who loves you most. And for those who are worshiping with us online, you who are in your homes or in a friend's house, this is a time for you to be intentional. Be intentional about sharing a meal. It might not be this host, but take some bread, something, bless it, share it. We are all at this world global table. Let's keep this feast. Amen. The servers and acolytes, Amen. please join.
thank Reverend Steve specifically this morning, who during the communion reminded us that we are called to be holy troublemakers, not to cause trouble for ourselves and to disrupt this world, but to disrupt this place so that this world might become a place where God would be pleased to live and to work one more time. So holy troublemakers, Amen. go in the love of God. Amen. Amen. Let's rise in body and spirit as we close worship in song. <laughs> For the benediction, but I'm going to invite you not to race out of the building, but rather to stay present whilst we hear our post uh, on our church organ this morning. And now unto God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Remain where you are for a moment.
joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, all of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews. We are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You are a part of us.